This video will focus on two things. The first one is poison ratio, where it's how is wind vary against the stress strain and the angle. And also, the second one is the strength. Alright, talking about how do you determine the strength of your composite. Alright, so there is two things. Alright, the, the, the poison ratio that deals with the stress strain and the how do you determine the composite strength. Alright, so the first one is stress strain relationship. Stress, stress strain relationships, not variation, but anyway. So, the poison ratio, um, this is this denotes poison ratio is equal to minus epsilon 1 over this thing. And if you think about it, this is actually coming from where? You can assess it through your lecture note part 1, alright, page 56. Okay? And this is the equations that is being used in that particular, um, just now what I've shown you. So if you don't believe, you can just sub in i as 2 and j as 1. So it's Poisson ratio 2. So i is 2, then j is 1. You see? So it's minus epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2, which is this one. Alright, it's also equals to this thing, which is this one. Alright, so if you are talking about v21, then you're gonna bring this v21 up, this e2 down, and this e1 down. These e's are your young modulus. Okay? So hopefully this is pretty clear, at least you're gonna know where, where are they linked to. And just to take note, if you have your fiber ratio, alright, this is one one minus f is your fiber f is your fiber, one minus f is your matrix. So if your normally is in, in terms of zero point something, because for example if your fiber is zero point two, alright, then your matrix should be zero point eight. When they add them up together you should be equal to one. Alright, this is your percentage of your fiber, this is the percentage of your matrix. Okay, this is why they are adding up as equals to 1. 1 which means that it is equals to 100%. Okay, so if 0 0.2 then means it's 20% of fibers, 80% of matrix. That's the meaning of that. So if they give you this type of matrix uh, percentage and everything, you can also calculate your poison ratio based on this thing. Okay, provided that you are given any strain and things like that. So this is another um, insights to, to to manipulating your 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 data. Unless if you have young modulus, you can also find your yourself your poison ratio. Okay. So another thing is take note of the poison ratio along the fiber and across the fiber. Okay. Along and across. Okay. To visualize this, all right. Let's take a look on this this fiber. All right. This is the matrix. This is your fiber. Alright, along the fiber means it's pulling in this direction. Okay, if you want to understand more, okay, if you think about it, your poison ratios is in terms of a expand divided by compress. Okay, so expand is your uh, J, okay, while your compress is your I. Okay, if you think about it. So V I J means that it is actually compress at the at the bottom the expand is at the top so over here the expansion is in this direction is in the one direction all right so therefore this is over here your j is one i shouldn't have said that yeah it is correct but i have to make it sounds logical i should rephrase is that why do we call it poison ratio to to one direction all right so therefore and um, this is in the one direction this is in the two direction okay so if you were to pull in the one direction expand all right which is the j all right your your j which is the second number all right you're expanding you're pulling in the one direction and then the first the first number i is actually the one that is being compressed this is the two direction so this is why it's called two one okay hopefully this is pretty clear because i think i think you are pretty clear so the the first number is for uh, compress the second one is for um, expand so it's where you pull all right so this this one is where you compress and this the, the second one is where you pull all right but when when does it being pull or when does it being compressed is actually by the the tensile of the one direction because if you think about it if you were to pull in this direction then this thing over here at as time goes by, this will actually be compressed. You see, it's being compressed in this direction. So when you pull in this direction, you are compressing it in the two direction. This is in the in the in the direction two direction. This is in the one direction. All right. Hopefully, this is pretty clear. 
at least you get to know the reason behind the 2 1 or 1 2 okay so it's along the fiber along these fibers and you pull it and across the fiber means it's this one okay hopefully this is pretty clear although yeah for the next thing is actually this graph okay for G is your shear modulus talking about your string uh, how you can tank for your in, in terms of the shearing this is for your young modulus E okay well this is your poison ratio and this the axes are all your angles as you can see for your um, shear modulus all right at 45 degrees all right if you were to lay your fiber in the 45 degrees angle it is the highest or right, it has the highest um, so-called shear modulus as compared to um, uh, one two directions or even two one directions because shear modulus one two or two one they are the same so in other words they are the same now so but if you are to arrange in the 45 degrees direction actually it is high it is it is good for shearing so 45 degrees is good for shearing all right so the shearing we have somewhat clear so what if the young modulus young modulus is good for the one direction all right so if your fiber is in this direction this is the maybe i should draw in a different way so this is the one direction this is the two direction so if you were to pull in this direction as you can see your young modulus is quite high all right high means means uh you're pretty elastic all right so you can take in more more of the the, the stresses all right so higher the better for young modulus okay. so this implies that the material is a stiff material because the stiff material has a high young modulus okay so it's able to actually um, take in more of the the materials I mean take, take in more of the stresses okay so in the one direction uh, which is what we are designing for for the fiber in the one so in the two direction as you can see it's pretty weak or it can be easily broken so it's not stiff well the E1 is actually stiff alright so at the 45 degrees it is quite significantly low alright it's easy to break in the, f in the 45 degrees okay and over here this is your poison ratio alright this is v poison v v1 2 and this is v2 1 and what it means is that the highest value you are alright the highest um, poison ratio doesn't mean that it is good or bad but it depends on the young modulus also okay so um just to show you lah, okay so this is your fibers orientation this is in the one direction this is in the two direction for example so poison ratio in the one two direction means that when you are actually pulling in this thing and over here is compressing this is what it means okay and over here if you think about it you are when you try to pull this you're expanding things right you're expanding it so you're expanding fast at a faster rate than when it is being contracted all right where it's being compressed so this is why over here the expansion is faster than the compression and this is why uh, if you think about it, it's expansion divided by compression so if expand is very high and compress is only one if you think about it the expansion is the poison ratio will be very high okay so um, this means that the the material will will so called more susceptible to being pulled in this direction all right so in other words it's more susceptible to being pulled in this direction it's easier to pull so it means when it means it's easier to pull this means that it's also easier to break Alright, depends on the young models already. That's why it's interlinked between them already. So because the young models if it's if it's uh weaker, alright, then it is or if young model is lower, alright, then it is elastic. If the young I don't know how to say that. But anyway, it doesn't need to take note that uh it's the the ratio between expansion and compression. Alright, over here the, the ratio are quite spread out. So if you are pulling in this direction, so this this is being stretched over in this direction but it is also being compressed in this in this thing so the the ratio between the expand and the compress is quite controlled as comparatively to the to the v12 which is trying to pull in this direction because this when you pull in this direction this is called the transverse if you pull in this direction if you remember is the called the longitudinal and we are often designing our fiber in this direction right so this is what we mean uh, and we are looking at all this uh these factors now okay and i should say that whether will it break or not all right so if you were to pull in this direction and this one will, will compress right as i say if you are to talking about v12 because i just remember so if you were to pull in this direction all right the things does not depends on the young modulus but it actually depends on the material or it depends on its u strength 
Alright, because your composite is normally a a a a young uh, hooks law type of thing. So it's elastic. So at this point, this is your U strength. Once it reaches your U strength, it breaks and straight away it dies. Finish. All right. So therefore, um, ensure that your your U strength is high so that you can actually tank tank more la. Okay. So you have it requires more more of the 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 material and things like that. But at least you get a few of things. And so far, what I've been talking only is the stress strain against the angle. All right. And as you can see, the forty five degrees is quite uh good for the shearing but comparatively for for the longitudinal direction this is not very good all right for the 45 degrees the poison ratio is pretty high which means that you are going to break all right you're going to break the thing easily all right if you were to arrange in the 45 degrees all right when you pull you are going to break the fiber quite easily all right because you're going to expand it expand it faster all right this is why over here is very high so when you lay something that is 45 degrees, you have to take note that it is quite dangerous if you were to do that. Okay. So now let's talk about the strength of your um, lamina. All right. In this case, we are talking about isotropic. All right. This page is talking about isotropic, page 52, while the page 53 is talking about um, an, an isotropic or autotropic one direction. Okay. So for a isotropic material, which is the same direct, same strength, um, or same strength in all directions. All right, then we are looking at the principal stress and strain. All right, where the principal stress is normally the largest value, uh, you could find. All right, for your for your particular material. So if you in in the future if you don't understand anything about principal stress, come to my channel and then you switch created playlist, and then go and find Sam Three, Mechanics Four N. All right, and then Control F find your principal stress. All right. Then you have all this principal stress coming out. Okay, I spray for I think twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Twenty one is the principal stress definitions. Okay, which uh video twenty one for that particular playlist. All right, and you know for isotropic, your highest stress is your principal stress. All right, that's all. Finish for n isotropic or autotropic material. All right, where you where 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 we're talking about this type of material where you pull in one direction, strong strong in one direction. Alright, isotropic is strong in all direction. Okay, hopefully you understand. And therefore, um, for autotropic, alright, principal stress is not of interest anymore. Okay, you may wonder why. Okay, this this x itself, for example, if you take it, alright, okay, I think I should just explain principal stress quickly. So over here, this is your material. This is the one direction. This is the two direction. Principal stress is an angle. Alright, that is somewhere n about this angle. All right. When you apply a certain direction onto this 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 material, all right, this is the highest stress you could apply, uh, or this is the highest stress that the material can tank. All right. So in this in this uh angle, this particular angle, this can actually uh tank quite a lot of a uh, a strength. All right. So for isotropic material, uh, you should find this principal stress. All right. And the x, y, and s is just the, the one direction and the two direction, the y. And your shearing is just your s. Okay? And therefore, if you were to come back here in for your um, autotopic, so previously we talked about the, the i isotropic. Yeah, over here is isotropic, meaning same strength in all directions. Alright? Over here, this is only uh, it's different strength in different directions. All right. So um, in this case, all right, as you can see, this is strongest in the x direction, which is three fifty. In the y direction, is weakest. Or in the z, in the shear direction, is uh, 14, 14 MPa. All right. So if you have certain angle again, all right, which is over here, the the angle is over here will be somewhat smaller than this x. Okay. I repeat again. This principal stress over here will be smaller than your than your x value okay the reason behind is because over here in in this in this direction all right in this direction this is very weak 7 pa only all right previously all right they are they are the same in all directions all right so i should redraw again so in the isotropic one all right in over here isotropic okay they are same in this direction and this direction okay but for the n isotropic one all right 
this is very big while over here this is a very weak weak spot all right so a very weak one plus a very um strong one in this direction or the strong one definitely is the strongest if you were to angle it to a certain angle we should move it to slightly weaker this is the weakest this this point is the weaker or this direction is the weaker so you are moving your strong one to the weak side so the more angle you are the the more weaker you are all right so this is the the reason behind their their explanations all right so therefore for principal stress uh, make sure you don't have a certain angle when you certain angle is actually making your your material in other directions to be weaker okay and therefore as you can see your your strength is 350 your stress one is 315 so you're in the one direction you can you can take it but for this for the y direction this is 7 mpa but with the stress is 14 mpa and definitely you will fail okay and this is the meaning of that la. okay i must keep on saying is that isotropic material your highest stress or highest strength is principal stress all right use your principal strength for isotropic for n isotropic use um use your highest x value your your longitudinal strength all right for for n isotropic material or autotropic material please use your longitudinal strength okay hopefully this is pretty clear so over here all right this is the property chart of your um so-called lamina all right so these are the different materials you use or these are the properties all right the properties is talking about the the strength all right the stress you can take all right at a particular angle all right over here this is in the parallel angle with your fiber all right this is why it's showing you the parallel side all right over here this is the per perpendicular so this means that you are actually laying in this direction sorry um you are still delaying you are still okay sorry this is this is your laminate all right this is definitely for your unidirectional meaning one direction laminate okay so if you were to pull in this direction which is parallel is x direction this is x i should have drawn like that better okay, this is x all right this is y all right so in the y is perpendicular to your x all right so therefore it's perpendicular and then over here this is something to show you that it's being shear all right it's being sheared because when you shear you are moving in this direction you see so something that looks like something like that like your hex like your hashtag or whatever thing i don't know and then over here this is for your this over here is for your strength all right this over here is for your young modulus and this one is a poison ratio okay and that's it all right so you can just take in the different values and then you just uh move here and there okay which is very similar to the to the graph over here okay which we have discussed just now for all of our things and these are the the different things to actually um so-called rate your um, lamina or right, to see what type of lamina um, strength or shear modulus young modulus or whatever thing that you want all right that can help you with your understanding so yeah